I'm Terry Walker, and this is my scrapyard. Morning, boss. All right, Coxie. Do you want a Cup of tea, please. Happy days. There's profit in every ounce of a scrap car. Yeah, 50 quid, pal. I buy them, strip them, squash them, and then flog the lot. What a good day. <laughs> I started the yard over 20 years ago, a few years after I met Lindsay, their wife. Don't go mad at spending money. Can I spend it on you, then? Oh, yeah, no problem. It just makes money out. It's just this knack he's got. I do it by employing lads that no one else will. Individually, they're good lads, they're all right. But together, they're just like a load of hyenas. <laughs> it's like a circus sometimes. <laughs> You've got to keep laughing, cos if you don't, you'll cry. Move these tires! Move them! I won't have the Mickey took out of me. If they do that, they're history. There's more cars to come well, up. Get them sorted! If they're sure willing, and, they've got, and, I, and I can see something in them, I won't give up on them easily. Can't get a job nowhere else. Nowhere else will have me. It's the Metro family, and it's the family that I've created from scratch. It's all change at Metro Salvage. Royal! Can you come here a minute? Terry's wife, Lindsay, has banned him from spending at the car auctions. John! So Terry's turned his attention to the cars and parts already in stock. Come on, tip back. That's a Renault, that. It was probably a scrap. What Lindsay was saying is, whoa, slow down, get the best out of what you've already got. Woo! And that's what we're doing, really. Right. Our Lindsay is happy as long as the money's rolling in. To be honest, I've always listened to our Lindsay. I mean, she's all right, though, until she opens her mouth. Oh, nice little butterfly. Lindsay's the boss, isn't she, really? In the yard, Terry's the boss, but behind closed doors, I think Lindsay wears the pants. John, it's not going to move on its own. You've got to get older. I'm advising him and saying, look, let's try it this way, or let's... I'm not against you, I am. I want to improve things. And... No, you, you don't know what you're talking about. She don't know about the running of the yard, but sometimes it's just better to listen and have a quiet life. Or so just get on with it and have a quiet life. I can't stand doggers. He loves it, though. Last week, Terry struggled to make 25 grand just to break even. This week, he's determined to make a profit, but he's got to do it Lindsay's way. This is the biggest scrap metal yard in the northwest of England. On in. Another day, another dollar. It's the centre of Terry Walker's Bolton Empire, selling scrap metal, second-hand cars and used car parts. Hello! It's the first day under Lindsay's regime, and for the system to work, Terry needs to make sure every bit of profit is squeezed out of each car. So your water engine there on top. What's, what, is, what is that doing there? but the lads have got into bad habits. Jason! Crane driver Jason has used the grab to rip out an engine and throw it on the scrap pile. This Toyota engineer, here, he's ripped it out and just cost us 120 quid. And I've just watched you throw a Renault engine on. A 16-valve uh, Renault engine. Which was scrap? Oh, is it scrap? That's what they, that's what they are, you, are you a mechanic all of a sudden? And then there's a battery there, see it? Should have had that battery. I can yeah. see a Vauxhall engine, though. Why is that there? Sometimes it really annoys me when vehicles go through the crushing machine before uh, we've had enough money out of, that, out of that particular vehicle. Just check this one here. He's doing what I've told him to now. He's finally soon. He can see what's coming and going now. It's what he was doing before. He's buying far too many. Where he, he was forgetting what he's bought. It's... And they were leaving engines in the rain. Everything, so that's why we were losing money. Yeah. He thinks any car he buys makes money. Yeah. And it doesn't. Not always. It makes him feel better when he's spending money for some reason. I don't know. It's either. like you with your handbags, Linda. I don't think so. 
In deep pollution, where they remove the oil, petrol, as well as small parts, Terry has briefed the team to be extra vigilant. Everything's got to come off. We can sell near enough everything we take off, again, anyway, like petrol, wheels, battery. We even sell the bolts off the wheels. So that's your car, catalytic photo. That's probably worth 40, 50 quid. Well, everything's money, isn't it? The world is muck, there's brass, and this is muck. And you make money off of it. But making sure the lads salvage every nut and bolt is only half the battle. With over 400 cars and literally thousands of spare parts spread across 9,000 square foot of yard, finding anything is a challenge. And it's affecting the customers coming to buy spare parts. 54. Yeah, pal. 2003 Civic. All right, mate. No problems. When I'm sending lads down to the yard to look for parts and they can't find the parts, and you know that the parts are here, but the yard's a mess. You know what I mean? And they're missing things. Yeah, there is one, Dave. But it's not got an engine in. <laughs> it's nothing more irritating than someone coming in for a part and you know you've had it and you've got rid of it. You know what I mean? Because that's profit gone. <laughs> ain't got one, pal. Searched everywhere, we ain't got one. Sorry about that, mate. It's all right. We've done yeah, our best. Yeah. If Lindsay is going to get profits up, Terry needs to get the yard in order. I want to get all the yard nice and clean and all the cars pointing the right way. Dave, so are you all right now with spinning these cars around? The aisleways, I like them dead straight. Bit sad, really, but that's just the way it is. Get these racks back so I've got the two straight lines going down the yard for morning. Yeah? All the cars have got to come off the rack, spun round, put back on, nice. That's how he wants it, he wants it all organised, everything. I'll do anything. If you know me, I'll do anything. Whatever I got told to do, I'll do it. 180 each, please. Do you want the 80? Well, you've got it, yeah. Just yeah. for once. Sisters Debs and Michelle run the on-site cafe and depend on its takings for their wages. In the past few months, I'd say it's been quiet. There's one thing I do know, I do need to get more customers because I can't just rely on the lads in the yard. The bank over the road, we get a few of them come in, the posties. We need to get a bit more in order to start earning a wage, really. Do you know something? I don't think I am very well known because people don't realise that there's cafe in a scrap yard. And honestly, many a time people have walked in and they've gone, wow, it's like an oasis. It's like being in the desert of Egypt and just seeing this little oasis, green, water and all. I think people Where know you? what an oasis is. Yeah, I know, I know people <laughs> Do I have to explain it? <laughs> With changes in the yard moving ahead, Terry is also investing in a bit of staff development. He's decided to train another member of the team to use the most important tool in the yard. Gloria the Grab. A dangerous machine in the wrong hands, Terry needs to find the right person for the job. He needs someone level-headed, sensible and trustworthy. So he's chosen carefully. Oh. <laughs> all right, mate. How you doing, son? You all right? Yeah. You know what I mean, mate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's mint looking here. It's best days of your life, do you know what I mean? Better than anywhere else, anyway. I've never had a job anywhere else, actually. Jump in, pal. Come on, lad. Up you go, there. Boyle left school at 14 with no qualifications. Everybody's sceptical of Boyle, you know, because he's a little live wire. Sometimes he's really good and sometimes he's a bloody nightmare. But I've got faith in the lad that one day he'll flourish. You don't need to track anywhere yet. We'll discuss that on another day, so you're just in position now. If they can teach him for drive that, they're good. Boyle who can't concentrate on anything for more than... He can't concentrate on what he's eating. <laughs> Terry knows what he's doing, though, doesn't he? Mm. Does he? 
Turn the car yeah, over that's here. That's what I'm doing. I'm bringing it to this me. This is what I always do. Then grab it on the side and put it back. I'm not walking past the machine. Not while he's in that. No way. I think I'm going to take a wider route for the minute. Grab the dash lightly. Pull it through slowly. When a car comes to glory to be scrapped, the radiator, shock that's absorbers it. and engine, if it can't be resold, are ripped out. Open your grab slightly. But the copper wire that comes in car dashboards needs a delicate touch. Nice one. Ah. Definitely an accident waiting to happen. He's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not old enough yet. Yeah. He's never concentrated on anything for more than two minutes. And that scares me with him. Just don't gun at a machine when he's in it. Worst case scenario, if Bile's in that machine, he could drop a car on someone. I wouldn't leave him alone. I wouldn't even leave him alone with a sweeping brush, to be honest. <laughs> They all want him to fall flat on his face, but I believe in him. I'm going to arrange for him to take his um, 360 grab test, you know, to drive the machine. And once he passes that, it'll be like one nil to boil. Legally, you don't have to have passed the test to operate the grab, but Terry is keen for Boyle to have an official qualification. This is mint, this. I could do it all day. Right, uh, can I go now? In the cafe, the day's off to a slow start. Coxie, one of the mechanics, is first through the door, but he's brought his own food. This is Miss Jew. Miss Jew. Yes. Do you want to spend it? Yes, please. Oh, he's not asked us for a bottle go with it. What's good, that? Mm-hmm. Spicy. This is regular. I mean, who can afford to eat out every day? I understand that. It's just... Well, he didn't have last night for his tea, so he's having it today for his dinner. No, it's no. a spare one. Oh, it's a spare one. He had it last night for his tea. He drinks a meat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Delivered to Oh, I don't mind. It's not as if they don't buy here. They do. I'd rather them do that than not do that. I'd just like a little bit more. <laughs> have I got a custard? Yeah. Yeah. I brought my own cake, but I forgot my custard. <laughs> 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 he's got me on bowl. <laughs> Terry's reorganisation of the yard is almost complete. Obviously, we're putting the sawdust down in case any oil goes on the floor. You know, it's easier to clean then, isn't it? It makes the yard look a bit more presentable. Because you wouldn't think this is a scrap yard. You'd think that this is like a hospital. You know, the NHS hospital, we're very clean, we've got it. Be able to eat your Sunday dinners off the floor, because it'll be that clean. The question is, will Lindsay think he's done enough? Right, I've got this vest here, and I want to show you what we've been doing at Yard, if you're interested in, in, in knowing. You want to come at Yard? Yeah, I want to show you what we've been doing. Do you want to come and have a look at that? No, I didn't think you would. Yeah, you. Mind your back, Nat. I don't want you jumping too fast. Yeah. <laughs> not So you are, you actually I'm do want coming. to come and have a look? Yeah. Bloody hell, I thought you'd say no. I have to have a look. I don't trust him. You mean you don't trust me? Uh. No, you were going on about saying, like, you know, get rid of what you've got and sell what you've got and this and that and the other. Well, what? It's not giving me a lit. <coughs> it's just the way I put things across. Right. I'm not giving me a lit. So I'll just show you where I'm up to and then you can see. This was bombarded with tyres. We're right out here, but we managed to get on, on top of everything now because we're not bringing as much in. Oh, I can see him pointing. I can see him pointing up to, to the cars, and she's just, she's just stood there. So we've got all these drains were all blocked, and obviously he's still got a few ankle breakers. Yeah, it's sweet that he's took her outside, but... It's sweet that he's took her outside. It's emotional. I oh, know. That's your Dubai order. Yeah, you know, it's date night as well, isn't it? Get it good, but for tonight, for date night. I know. Might think he's on a promise. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you really want me to elaborate on that? Have you bought any more cars recently? No. God, as you can see, we don't need any. Well, it's tidy you now, isn't it? You've done well, really, haven't you? Basically, I got a kick up the backside, didn't I? A verbal kick up at the backside. Yeah, it does look better, honestly. It looks miles better. I'm really pleased with it. I am, honestly. He never really has listened, listened to that extent before. So, yeah, hopefully he'll, he'll listen from now on. I don't know what we'll do, though. We, we won't be having any rows, will we? Nothing wrong with that. I'll have speed to it. <laughs> I'll let you
Old Terry's hard work seems to have paid off, but now he's spotting more and more things he wants to change to keep the business profitable. Well, I, right now, I feel like I am definitely going to have to lose staff under this regime. I feel like there's a lot of staff here now that are not doing anything for, to earn their wages. Simple as that. You know, there's 40 staff here, remember? I, I can easily, easily run this with 20. Four people work in the depollution shed. It's one of the areas Terry suspects is overmanned. Well, it's, um, yeah, lock it. So you, what you're doing, just covering for him? No worries. Mara, is this engine coming out today or next week? You've got to finish him off properly, one car at a time, otherwise you'll be the master of the half-finished job. Yeah. Chris, clearly this is not looking right. No, I know, I know. I can, I can come in and do it myself, but then why would I want to employ people? I reckon, this is my opinion now, he does all the work in here. No, he only works when cameras are in there, aren't you? When cameras are here, or you're not here, he does this. He, he doesn't even take a dinner hour. You've gone for about two he hours. He take a dinner hour? You've gone for two hours at dinner time. <laughs> no way. 20 minutes. 20 he takes minutes? Two dinner hours. Right now, some people are working very hard and some are getting away with it, and it's not fair. Chris has clocked off for the day. It's when I get a chance to read, when, when I'm on my way to work, when I'm on my way home from work. So it's the only chance, really. When I'm at home, I've got the kids and it's a bit hard, you know what I mean? They're all young and they're loud and they jump all over you. They won't let you read. In the cafe, more new customers can't come soon enough. Well, it's not a lot. A bit disappointed today. It's been a very quiet day today. I'm probably left with maybe £40. Sometimes it can be £30. <laughs> but you've just got to keep going, haven't you? Keep going and keep trying, keep plodding. It's date night. Since they got married 29 years ago, Terry has taken Lindsay out for dinner every week. Are you all right, Mary Ann? It's bright in here, isn't it? Isn't it? It's supposed to be candlelit dinner. Nothing. It looked You're really to good plant. today. Honestly, I, can't, I was dead proud of it today. End of the day, you know, I have to admit you were right. It needed a little bit of a kick up backside for the sort of job out, didn't it? God, I need a drink now you've just said that. I'm right. You need a bigger one than that. My God. thing is, now it's all streamlined, I can spot what everyone's doing. You know, cos there's not a great big pile of cars, so nobody can sort of, like, hide from me. Like, today, there was four in the um, depollution bay. Well, I don't need four now. I only need two. No, maybe you might not want them as many days. All I'm saying to you, anyway, is if we get more efficient, you won't need as many staff. Well, we'll see. Some of them may have to be put on shorter hours or even lose the jobs. Right, well... We'll see. I don't Can we talk it. about something else instead of that yard for a change? That bloody stupid scrap yard? Yeah. You're getting a bit giddy now, you. <laughs> Put that wine down. Morning, Chris. Chris. See it, you're tired. Pretend it's a woman. You're delicate. I mean, take your time! Having slept on it, Terry's decided to hold off letting anyone go for the time being. The lads within the yard are absolutely reliant on me. I would say some of them are virtually unemployable. If they didn't work here, they would be reliant upon government handouts uh, and go, obviously, try and find a job elsewhere, but I think they'd, I think they'd struggle. When I got out of jail, 92, uh, I applied for about four jobs, that's yards, and uh, Terry was the one who took me on. He's given a lot of people employment. You know what I mean? He has. But I've been here eight years now. He's kept me out of trouble. I'll be here till I retire. I don't want to go anywhere else. There's no point. You might like, say you like the job, so 
This is me for life, I reckon. It's a bit like social services, giving people a chance who other people wouldn't, I suppose. But in, 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 as Terry sees it, they're helping us as well. In the cafe, things are still slow. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Close a brew cock. A brew. But Debs has got a plan. While you're here. She wants to print up a new menu to help drum up trade from the local area. And she's roping in the yard's IT expert, Leighton. That's my picture. Who's that supposed to be? Look at the size of chips on that. Chips. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. My friend Simon's done that. That's me. Can you not tell? He's uh, kind, isn't he? What are you trying to say? <laughs> He's just a nice lad. Right, listen. That's, I want that. It's on the front. Because on the front, not that big, obviously. It just goes like there, and that's what goes on menu. You see, and just put it in, you know, into a format. Right, so I'll go and have a crack at this now. Yeah. I'll come back to you or something. All right. Yeah. All right, then. Thanks, right, Leighton. See you in a bit. Thanks, love. See you later. See you later. Bye. See you. I've not got all my breath. <laughs> I've not got all my breath because I didn't know what the freaking hell I were on about. The yard is running more efficiently and sales are picking up. Screw that equipment up with steamer. Under Lindsay's new regime, Terry's well on target to secure the £25,000 turnover he needs each week. So, he can now turn his attention to Boyle, because today is his crane test. I want him to better himself, you know, to show that he can do it. Uh, also, it's, you know, so he can actually take over and do a job that's worthwhile at Metro Salvage. The external examiner has arrived for the first part of the test, the practical assessment. We're off, mate, we're off, mate. Oh, sweet, that. It's sweet. I'm looking out for how safe they are. Obviously, they're working on a very delicate job with people that are in pro, uh, close proximity. Boyle's uh, history of um, taking tests before is a bit of a chequered past. He's not really done that well, but... You know, when he's doing something that he likes to do, he's spot on. For Boyle, the first part of the test has been easy. Come on. Come on, Slim. But things are about to get a whole lot harder. Just crack on your normal, Slim. Do you know what's coming now, don't you? No. Theory test. Come on, cop. Theory? You've got to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> got to sit down and chill out. <laughs> Terry has never taken his theory test either. So he's decided to give Boyle a bit of moral support and sit with him. Right. You've got the theoretical test, 15 questions. You need to gain 11 out of the 15 right. to hit the pass mark. All right. OK. Yeah. Yes, spot on. So you, you'll do the test separately, so there's no conferring with each other. Yeah. Mm. It's got to be on your own initiative. Yeah. Have you any questions before we start this test? Anything you want to ask me? Uh, no, I'm all right, mate. If you can't read them, will you read them out to me? Right. OK, so you've a bit of a problem with your reading. I yeah. can help you with the reading, yeah. yeah. How are you with the writing? Can we? Yeah, I can write. I can okay. write, but I can't spell properly. It's your knowledge on the machine. We're not right. testing you for spelling, so don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, no worries. All right, <laughs> right you want to get your seats? Yeah, I'm ready. Right. OK, boy. Do you want right. me to read them out to yeah, you? Yeah, please, yeah. Right. Right, I'm going to get this pen on now. Right, question number one. What is the correct way of mounting and dismounting the machine? The correct methods for... Dismounting? What do you mean? Getting into the machine and getting out the correct way of doing it. All right, um... What would you say? Well, I can't. <laughs> I know what I can, but I know the answer. <laughs> Why is it important to travel with the boom low and the dipper arm folded in? Um, what's that, number 17? 17, yeah. Right, I've done that one. I'm going for C. 23C, yeah. OK. That's the 15 questions completed, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, right. OK. How are you doing, Terry? Yeah, I've done it, me, mate. OK. Yeah. I'll mark them if you want to just go and wait. All right, thanks, Colin. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So how do you reckon you've done, man? Yeah, yeah, I think I've done all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. especially when it's all your answers. 
No, he didn't tell me answers. He no, wasn't no, reading but... me questions, man. But right. hopefully, fingers crossed, we're both past. I reckon. If I get more than you, you put my wage up to 60 quid a day. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> While Terry and Boyle await their results... I'm having an otter, can you see sweat dripping off me? <sighs> Bloody tropical menopausal moments. <laughs> the girls in the cafe are still waiting for their new menu. Hi, Deb. Yeah, I'm surprise. A surprise? Uh, uh, Deb's cafe. Oh, wow! Oh, look at that! Uh, Deb's. Uh, Deb's? Oh, look at that! <laughs> oh! But Leighton has taken a few liberties with it. Don't run prices. Well, I thought you were a bit dear, so I, I slipped prices down a bit. <gasps> They're all wrong prices! <laughs> Wait, for a pound? Yeah, I knocked 50p off each. You didn't, you knocked a pound off that at 90p. Two pounds for bacon? Your price has changed since last time you gave them you, you can't do that. 20p Sam, for a bottle of water? Cheap, innit? That's what Drinks don't do tea to me! <laughs> Are you for real? They do 30p tea in Blackpool. We're not in Blackpool. Thirty feet for tea. Let him. We're not in Blackpool. <gasps> oh, there you go. Oh, oh, that's, nice. that's the extortionate one. <laughs> it's the moment of truth. Time to find out if the boss has proved himself in front of his protege, and whether Boyle will get his first ever qualification. Right, Terry. Well, dear Terry, you've gained 14 marks out of 15. So that's a pass well within Boyle. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Right. Out of the 15 questions, you managed only to get all 15. Yeah! Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 15, every... Oh, no. so? Yes. Well you need a nod for that. You need a nod. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Not me. You yeah. answered You answered it. Yeah. yeah. OK. So well nice done. one, pal. I'm here. I'm here. I'm a fool, baby. Yeah, man. Thanks, Albert. Well done, lad. First of many, yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah, right. yeah man. Knuckle down. I'm the man. I'm yeah. the man. Yeah. Yeah. Next one's your driving licence. Yeah. That's not a driving licence. That doesn't mean you can go up road at machine. No. <laughs> it's been a good week. They've done it Lindsay's way and profits are up. And Boyle has a certificate to his name. Yeah! That's the first ever test I've ever passed full. Uh, every question right. Failed every other one. <laughs> Balls in. Balls in. Well, Boyle never went to school. That's why he ended up at Metro Salvage in the first place. Now he's got a licence, something to, to look at and, and be proud of. And I'm proud of him too. <laughs> There'll be fur ground rides going on in that area, up to the edge of that shed. He's gone absolutely start raving bonkers. Obviously, the two coppers have jumped on me, arrested me. Just silly, absolutely stupid. Not on this. There's too many of you here. Everybody's upset. Really upset. The last another thing she said was get your bags packed and get out. Oh dear. Scrappers is back next Friday at 8.30. Celebrity fans and the first to leave the tent, the great British Bake Off and Extra Slice over on BBC Two now. The next here on BBC One, brand new comedy drama starring Adrian Dunbar as Detective Inspector Walter. New comedy, though, on BBC Three now with Cuckoo.